Hello friends. Today I'll be discussing about internet addiction. I'm Dr. Suresh Badanmat, professor of psychiatry working at Nimans Bangalore. In this video I'll be discussing about internet addiction, who is a problematic internet user, diagnosis, prevalence, comorbidity and treatment of internet addiction. Across the world there are two important diagnostic categories. One is International Classification of Disease 11 by World Health Organization. Another one is DSM-5, that is Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders by American Psychiatric Association. Unfortunately, both the categories, that is ICD and DSM-5, did not give any attention to internet addiction. That means, internet addiction is not been a part of either of the diagnostic system. Although day in and day out, we see patients, especially children, young adolescents and young adults report with severe internet addiction. Unfortunately, none of these diagnostic categories have considered this. However, the world class institutes, hospitals are providing treatment for internet addiction. That is the reason this video is being made to make aware how to diagnose and what are the prevalence and comorbid conditions seen along with internet addiction and how we can treat this condition. The term internet addiction was first used in 1995 by Dr. Evan Goldberg. He used this term internet addiction disorder. This was made conceptualized by Dr. Kimberly Eng in 1996. The internet addiction, she called it as a generalized impulse control disorder based on its core psychopathology. That means this person has difficulty in controlling the impulse, hence he develops internet addiction. Further in 96, Griffith described this kind of technological addiction as a behavioral addiction that involves human and machine interactions. So, these are, this is how the evolution of this internet addiction started. But however, internet addiction is not a simple term. It is a syndrome with various subtypes such as net compulsions, that is online shopping, online gambling addiction, online gaming addiction, online research addiction, cyber sexual addiction, cyber relational addiction such as chat room, social networking, personal messaging and email addiction. So these were the five subtypes which were placed under the umbrella term of internet addiction. Net addiction can cause neurological complications, psychological distress, social problems, family problems, education, job problems and health problems. These are commonly seen in teenagers and young adults. Let's define internet addiction. Internet addiction disorder can be defined as a lack of control in the use of internet in such a way that impacts the personal life of the users. The impact is neurological, psychological, medical, education, social and personal life. So that is the impact the internet is, is going to have in spite of this impact that person is unable to stop using internet. Excessive use of online internet occurs with spending almost anywhere 40 to 80 hours per week. Sometimes in a day they may spend approximately 20 hours per day. There are cases where the patient was passing urine and stools in the clothes and he refuses to budge away from the computer or the gaming table. Food refusal, sleep deprivation, remaining absent from the schools are commonly seen. The refusal to move away from the computer, whenever the internet is switched off, they become violent. There are incidents they have attacked the family members, especially the parents. That is the severity of internet addiction. Let's understand what are the challenges in diagnosing internet addiction. 
given the popularity of internet usage that means almost everybody in the urban area is using internet so detecting diagnosing internet addiction is often dif difficult because it is a legitimate business part of the job part of it sector it can be a hobby it can be a professional work it can be used in art work hence this addictive behavior can be masked and it is difficult to say which is professional which is pathological internet addiction that means it has become a part of our life when it becomes addiction it is difficult to say and there is no uniformly accepted diagnosis available across the world till date internet is not considered as a taboo for example drugs use is considered as a taboo all call is considered as a taboo whereas internet even a child of 6 months the mother and father are giving access to internet that means there is no taboo involved it is a part and parcel of our life everybody has accepted it and internet has become a part and parcel of our life in such a scenario how do you call it as somebody is addicted since many of them are dependent for their livelihood on internet and during covid even the schools and colleges use this platform to provide classes and further we do not have systematic epidemiological studies of general population who are addicted even there are one or two studies are available but majority of the studies are done in a specialized populations like such as school going children college or corporate world hence it is difficult to know what is the exact prevalence in the society further people working in the it field are glorified and paid more for spending more time on internet further the internet gaming and gambling the good designer good responsive they they are even given prizes and internet is not considered a, as a commodity sold by underworld criminals hence internet addiction is difficult to detect difficult to say it is an illness who is addicted who is not addicted in 2005 dr keith beard proposed eight characteristics of internet addiction presence of five or more would be considered as internet addiction let's look into them what are those eight important criteria is proposed preoccupation with internet use that means the person will be always thinking of using internet tolerant to use of internet earlier if he spent half an hour he used to feel very happy now he has to spend one hour to get that happiness as the time passes he has to spend more time to get the same effect unsuccessful effort to control or cut back the stoppage of internet usage he may say i will use only for half an hour but ends up using four hours stayed online than originally intended that means he thinks that he will spend only half an hour but spends more time withdrawal symptoms whenever he tries to reduce or stop using internet it has risked significantly with regard to relationship job education career and friendship the people who are addicted to internet will be concealing their behavior telling lie to the family members they will be telling i am not playing but still they will be playing so this kinds of telling lies is very common uses the internet as a way of escaping from the real life dysphoric mood or bad mood that means they use this internet as a treatment for their depressed mood so these are the eight symptoms out of that even five is there we can call it as the person has internet addiction let's look into the assessment tools there are various assessment tools available online the commonest is used by everyone is internet addiction test by kimberley eng in 1998 this has been translated in many language available online the next one is problematic internet use questionnaire third one is compulsive internet use scale fourth one 
Chen Internet Addiction Scale. So these are the four important. But however, most of the studies and research revolves around the gold standard scale Internet Addiction Test by Kimberley. Let's look into this. This has 20 items or 20 statements. It is self-administered. The person who knows English, who can read and write, can administer himself. Each item has 5 point scale, 0 to 5. 0 is not applicable and 5 is always, that means severity. More the score, severe is the illness. Let's look into 20 items. The first item, how often do you find that you stay online longer than you intended? How often do you neglect household chorus to spend more time online? How often do you prefer the excitement of internet to intimacy with your partner? That means salience. How often do you form new relationship with fellow online users? How often do others in your life complain about you the amount of time you are spending on online? How often do your grades or school, work, school or work suffer because of the amount of time you are spending on online? How often do you check your email before something else you do? How often does your job performance or productivity has suffered because of the internet use? How often do you become defensive or secretive when anyone asks you about internet usage? How often do you block out disturbing thoughts about your life with soothing or relaxing by using internet? The 11th item, how often do you find yourself anticipating when you will go online? That means he's waiting for the time when you will be accessing the online. How often do you fear that life without internet would be boring, empty and joyless? How, on, how often do you snap, yell or act annoyed if someone bothers while you are using internet? How often do you lose sleep due to being online? How often do you feel preoccupied with internet? when offline or fantasize about being online? How often do you find yourself saying just few more minutes when online? How often do you try to cut down the amount of time spent online and fail to cut down? How often do you try to hide how long you have been online? How often do you choose to spend more time online over going out with others? That means he's not going in the real life, but he's on the virtual world. How often do you feel depressed, moody or nervous when you are offline, which goes away because of various reason. So these are the 20 items the individual need to rate between 0 to 5. So 20 items, each item to be scored on a rate of 0 to 5. So the maximum score is 20 into 5, 100. The higher the score is, severe the problem. If a person is scoring between 0 to 30, that means it is normal. If it is 31 to 49, it is mild internet addiction. If he scores somewhere 50 to 79, it is moderate level of internet addiction. And if it is anything between 80 to 100, it is a severe internet addiction. Let's look into the prevalence. The prevalence of internet addiction varies based upon what is the criteria used for diagnosing. And there are various studies available. Some of the studies, depending upon the broader diagnostic criteria, are restricted. It has been found 0.8% to 26%. And again, prevalence is dependent upon the measurement of scale and also which population you are surveying. surveying. That means if you are doing it in a school, in an urban area, it may be more. If you are doing in a corporate world, it may be still more. If you are doing in a rural area where there is no internet, it will be very less. So depending upon the population study, depending upon what type of instrument you are using, the internet prevalence varies. Further, internet addiction is significantly associated with male gender. So depending upon which gender you are studying, that is also makes a prevalence difference. Recently, there was a meta-analysis of 113 epidemiologic studies covering 6,93,300 subjects 
were considered in this 113 epidemiological studies and the studies from 96 to 2018 covering from 31 nations were reported and this study reported 7% has the prevalence of internet addiction. So, 7% is huge. Suppose in India, we are 140 crore population. If it is 7%, that means we are having around 9-10% to of the population having internet addiction. It's not a small number. It's a huge. What are the comorbidities? That means coexisting mental illness along with internet addiction. Commonest is depression. Obsessive compulsive disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, anxiety disorder, substance use disorder, impulse control disorder, personality disorder and sleep disorders. So these are the disorders which are commonly associated with internet addiction. Physical health like headache may be there, again backache, neck pain, hand pain, carpal tunnel syndrome, obesity, hypertension, diabetes or the other physical health condition commonly seen with internet addiction. Let's move into the next one. What are the risk factors which are known in internet addiction? The person who has frequent fights, that is inter interpersonal problems in real life, will avoid real life and go into internet. Broken family, family history of violence, family history of substance use, the person who is anxious, who has social anxiety disorder, the person who is rigid, inflexible, emotional instability, borderline personality, impulsivity, childhood trauma, boredom and poor self-esteem are the high risk factors which have been found to be associated with internet addiction. Let's look into the neurological basis of internet addiction. That means what is happening in the brain? in a patient who has internet addiction. There was a systematic review done by Sharifat et al. and that is Sharifat and his colleagues in 2018. This was a study titled as Systematic Review of the Utility of Functional MRI to Investigate Internet Addiction Disorder. A recent update on resting state and task based MRI. That means it is a functional MRI where the subjects, some of them were, were asked to do certain task, that is task-based fMRI or somebody is told not to do anything, that is a resting state MRI. 170 articles were chosen in that based upon the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria, there were 18 studies selected for systematic review for task-based fMRI. 17 studies were chosen for resting state fMRI study. The task based and resting based fMRI revealed that the areas of the brain that are activated in subject with internet addiction is similar to the subject observed in alcohol abuse, drug abuse, cocaine, cannabis abuse like any other substance. That means internet addiction affects the brain similar to cocaine or opioid which causes the brain damage. That means it is severe. The areas which have been found to be affected are striatal nucleus and dopaminergic system. Demonstrated impaired functioning in subject with internet addiction. These are the areas there were dysfunction. Subject with internet addiction disorder had shorter response time compared with healthy control indicating high impulsivity in these subjects who have internet addiction. Let's look into this brain. In this brain, again it indicates there is a reward deficiency syndrome. From ventral tegmental area that is VTA, the dopamine nerves ends up in nucleus accumbens. That means whenever there is a impulse control, there will be dopamine releasing occurs in nucleus accumbens which results in pleasure. There is a reward which occurs by the release of dopamine. Whenever there is a decreased release of dopamine, there is a reward deficiency. Hence, the person will search 
for reward by using drugs. That means he wants dopamine in nucleus accumbens. How it can be achieved? That is by using drugs. If you look at the molecular basis, you can see at the one end there is ventral, ventral tegmental area, on the other you can say nucleus accumbens. On the side of ventral tegmental area, there is dopamine, carbogenic neurons and opioid peptides. So these receptors are affected by opioids, by alcohol, nicotine alcohol and various other glutamate inputs. This will act through the opioid peptides or else through various neurons and then dopamine is released. So this is the picture which explains how the molecular basis of addiction occurs through dopamine pathway that is reward deficiency syndrome. Radio imaging studies have indicated that there is a reduced grey matter volume and reduced cortical thickness in prefrontal cortex, striatum and insula. Studies have indicated that abnormalities in white matter tract connecting prefrontal cortex have been clearly indicated. All these abnormalities seen are similar to drug abuse. That means internet addiction and drug addiction both have a same effect, same areas in the brain. That means it causes severe injury to the brain. Blum and his colleagues have discussed internet addiction as a part of reward deficiency syndrome, which they link to abnormal neurotransmitter interaction in the mesolimbic system. Those who achieve less satisfaction seek, that means less satisfaction means less reward, will seek enhanced stimulation of reward center of the brain through various behaviors that may be because of drugs or by internet addiction. That is, my dear friends, reward deficiency syndrome. Now let's move into the treatment of internet addiction. How to treat them? There are two important. Medication and psychosocial treatment. Before all these things, let me put the system into perspective. Whenever the person has internet addiction, who knows that he is spending more time, it is coming in his way of life, it has damaged his career, family, relationship, social life, and he wants to come out of this, that means for that person, treatment will be very successful. If the person does not have insight, he feels whatever he is using his internet is similar to others and does not recognize it as a problem, that means treatment outcome will be very poor. That means if you have to force the treatment on, on them, any treatment which it is forced or coerced on any person will not be helpful. Hence, having a good insight into their problem is very essential for the success of treatment. Now let's take medication. That is pharmacotherapy. There are various medicines have been tried, such as acetylopram, cetylopram, bipropion, olanzapine, quetapine have been tried. These acetylopram and cetylopram have been tried basically to attack the craving, impulsivity, because these are all SSRIs. Similarly, the bupropion has been given so that the dopamine pathway can be affected or else can be facilitated. Antipsychotics have also been tried like olanzapine and cotapine so that we can block that reward so that the person does not become dependent on internet. But however, these medicines, the studies have found, some of the studies have found they are helpful. The main reason being is these medicines work on the comorbidities such as depression, anxiety, boredom, impulsivity, anger. Those are the places these medicines are successful. Hence, the studies have shown positive reports. Whenever there is no comorbidity, only plain internet addiction is there, then these medicines may not work, my dear friends. Hence, these medicines should be used whenever there is a comorbidity. And invariably, 
comorbidity is the role in internet addiction that means most of the patients with internet addiction will have comorbid psychiatric condition that needs to be addressed and that can be treated by medicines further drugs like naltrexone has been used mamantine and even methylphenidate has been tried but however till date none of the studies have been found to be robust in telling that if you give this medicine you will find 100% improvement has not been found but these medicines are very helpful in comorbid condition my dear friends there are various studies and studies have shown which are open label rcts and how effective have been compared now let's move into psychosocial treatment in psychosocial treatment cognitive behavioral therapy has shown to be very effective in internet addiction when you start cognitive behavioral therapy first and the foremost thorough assessment has to be done and the person should have insight that i have a problem i require help and he is ready to work with the therapist to overcome internet addiction then only the cbt is going to work however there are many therapists who try cbt even in patients who have poor insight but have my reservation not to force therapy either it may be medication or cognitive therapy who do not have insight this is my opinion my dear friends so to if the person does not have insight you need to do insight facilitation by using psychoeducation and various other means if he has insight and he has given consent and he is ready to do cognitive behavioral therapy there is high possibility you can help him hence you start with baseline assessment using internet addiction tool severity assessment is done and then you will ask him to do daily internet log to evaluate how much he is using internet and how is he is using what is the pattern when does he use what is the time he feel dysphoric and how much time is consuming that log is very essential hence every day basis he has to keep a diary and make a log book of internet usage this cbt lasts for 16 to 24 session one to two sessions per week and these sessions will last for 3 to 6 months invariably these sessions which are lasting for 45 minutes will be assisted by therapist and remaining time at home or in the rehabilitation center he need to do homework in this homework he has kept a diary there he will monitor his thoughts he will monitor his emotions and what triggers him to go for internet online and now he is also done behavioral modification he will be asked to focus on positive lifestyle changes like exercise hobbies offline nano non technological activities will be given family gathering music activities spiritual activity indoor games will be encouraged now he has to move towards focusing on realistic outcome now the world has come to a place where internet is almost equivalent to electricity that means you require internet hence the realistic picture will be brought in here and abstinence from internet is not advisable hence we need to plan that moderate usage of internet should be planned that means harm reduction strategy should be planned and abstinence is simply difficult and moving away from internet is not advisable so we need to teach him cyber hygiene or internet hygiene for that legitimate use of internet legitimate use of online application which he is supposed to use those will be discussed and permission to use will be planned and he will log that in diary book further behavior modification exposure and response prevention modeling monitoring the usage of internet firewall blocks will be used and with the permission of the patient it will be done relaxation 
assertive skill training will be done. Cognitive works will be initiated. Majority of the patients I have seen will have cognitive errors. That means they will say, I am not good looking. Hence, they will go to internet, take photographs, modify the photographs, use various filters and post it online so that they are appreciated by unknown people and feels good about them. Hence, you need to work on their cognitive errors, their cognitive schemas, automatic negative thoughts. If they have depression, you need to work on that. If they have anxiety, we need to plan and do behavioral therapy. And on daily basis, daily book should be reviewed. Cognitive challenging, Socratic questioning should be used so that inside facilitation, at the same time, you will challenge their cognitive errors and try to see whether there are alternative way of leading life. Further, there are some cognitive errors which are very common in internet addiction is overgeneralizing, catastrophizing, minimization, maximization, rationalization is the one of the commonest. Negative core belief, cognitive distortions which is contributes for compulsive internet use is common. Ultimately, is to learn to control one's internet usage is the goal, not complete abstinence. Here, we need to ration the internet usage and over a period of time, the patient should learn how to be responsible online at the same time, what is the time used should be monitored and it will be used only for the productive purposes and internet entertain uh, purposes it should be off. Comorbid conditions like depression, personality disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, ADHD and so forth need to be addressed simultaneously my dear friends. Treatment addiction, treatment of internet addiction lacks uniform accepted diagnostic criteria across the world and there is a paucity of systematic study with regard to pharmacotherapy and even with regard to psychotherapy. Although internet is a much talked about the research about the disorder by every person but research is lacking. There is very few neurobiological studies, RCT based pharmacotherapy, RCT based psychotherapy are very less. Prospective studies, comorbidity studies, naturalistic follow-up study should be the future plan. That means it is a very fertile area for research. Internet addicts may benefit from combined psychosocial and pharmacotherapy. Actually, both form of therapy that is combination of psychotherapy and medication have been found to be useful on certain guidelines and expert consensus guidelines. Meta-analysis by Goslar and his colleagues. They clearly said that Psychological treatment especially when delivered face to face and conducted over an extended period of time reported long term gain. However, combination of CBT and medication showed advantage over monotherapies. However, long term studies involving large sample size, systematically sound studies and long term gain and follow up should be done. But at this point of time my dear friends, the 2020 Meta-analysis done by Goslar is very clear. Combination of medication and psychotherapy is best. Now, coming to the proposed diagnostic criteria for internet addiction, if it is going to be included in ICD-11 or 12, this should be the criteria. Those are preoccupation with internet, withdrawal symptoms when the internet is not available or reduced, tolerance for the time for getting the same amount of effect should be there. Unsuccessful attempt to control the internet use, harmful use, loss of other interest that is salience, use of internet to escape or to improve dysphoric mood is the commonest one should be considered. Deceiving others for the amount of time spent on online should be considered and significant disturbance in biological social occupation function should be the yardstick to say yes this person have internet addiction. Out of this at least 4 or 5 symptoms should be there along with that mandatory presence of disturbance in biological social occupational functioning must be there then only the internet addiction diagnosis should be done. 
to conclude my dear friends internet addiction is neither is there in icd 11 or dsm 5 and they are not they are not been included in this categorical diagnostic system only gaming and gambling is considered there is an urgent need to do research in this area especially the behavioral addiction disorder needs to be explored at the same time treatment aspect to be done and follow up of these cases to be done we need to have a uniform diagnostic system across the world and a single instrument should be used so that we can compare across studies and please remember comorbidity is the rule in internet addiction hence medication play a very clue very crucial role especially if they have comorbid conditions like depression anxiety disorder and various other condition so thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe